Hello, my name is Lindsay Hall, and I am the P-12 Program and Graduate Coordinator in the Department of Educational Administration and Foundations. The purpose of this short video and PowerPoint presentation are to go over the requirements for the portfolio. The portfolio is required for admission into the Principal Preparation Program. There are eight required elements in the portfolio. The portfolio cannot be submitted electronically. So I would suggest getting a three ring binder and dividing it into eight sections minimum. We're gonna go over those eight sections and then I'll also explain the types of evidence that you can use to support these elements of the portfolio. The first section should be about providing evidence of support for all students achieving a high standard of learning. You need to provide evidence in the portfolio of high expectations for all students, standards that are used in your classroom, the quality of supports that are provided for students, and also providing some evidence of student growth in your classroom. The next section of the portfolio is accomplished classroom instruction. There should be evidence of pedagogical knowledge, data that's used in your classroom, evidence of student growth, the process used for in instructional or curriculum changes. And you also need to provide data that provides evidence of two years of student growing and learning within the last five years including how data was used to inform instruction. You are welcome to submit your own evaluation as evidence of student growth. The next section of the portfolio should provide evidence of significant leadership roles. What leadership roles have you held? What were they and what are they? What happened as a result of your leadership? And what was significant about this in your school or in your school district? The next section of the portfolio should provide evidence of strong oral and written communication skills. This includes writing skills, your communication ability, and you're welcome to include others' interpretations of your oral and written communication skills. The next section of the portfolio is about your analytic abilities needed to collect and analyze student learning data. You will need to show evidence of data analysis, quality of the analysis, what is this data used for, and evidence of how the results from student assessment improve learning in your classroom. The next section of the portfolio is about demonstrated respect for family and community. You need to provide evidence of your interaction with families and communities. How do you do this and who is it with and how often? Strong interpersonal skills are the next section of the portfolio. You need to provide evidence of what this looks like. Show demonstrations of how your strong interpersonal skills have positively impacted the culture or climate in your building and others' interpretations of your interpersonal skills. You also need to provide knowledge of curriculum and instructional practices. You need to demonstrate content knowledge, instructional pedagogy, and how you use assessments to improve student learning and achievement. This is a non-inclusive list of all types of evidence that you can use and you are not limited to using this type of evidence in your portfolio. If there are other pieces of evidence that you can include, you are invited to do that. It should be noted that using the term classroom refers to whatever environment or space that you are currently working in. So for a classroom teacher, this is obviously a classroom, but if you are a school psychologist or a social worker or a non-classroom teacher, but still using your professional educator's license, your classroom might look a little bit different. Your portfolio is also confidential. So if you include information about students or yourself, it's still a good idea to redact any names, but this portfolio is not shared outside of the interview committee in the Department of Educational Administration and Foundations. And you are also invited to, if you'd like to, to include more than eight sections in the portfolio. You can also see that in reviewing the eight sections of the portfolio, there are many places where the sections overlap and you might be providing the same type of evidence in different sections, but it's asking for kind of the same thing. If you have any further questions about the portfolio process and what needs to be submitted, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My contact information is on this slide and this video will be posted on our website. Thank you.